Welcome to the Burn Your Mortgage Podcast, a Canadian real estate podcast that shows you how to pay off your mortgage sooner and live well while doing it. Now, here's your host, Sean Cooper. Welcome to the Burn Your Mortgage Podcast. I'm Sean Cooper, and it's great to be back for another episode. On today's show, I'll be talking to Katie Steinfeld. Katie is a seasoned real estate broker who is passionate about making the real estate industry better for both consumers and registrants. She is a board member with the Real Estate Council of Ontario, RICO, and enjoys staying involved in all levels of governance. Together with her partner, Daniel, On the Block Realty and On the Block Auctions was created to bring more innovation and modernization to the Canadian real estate industry. Too many people have been frustrated and turned off by the limited information in the real estate process, and they have set out to change that. Although rather new to Canada, the auction option has enjoyed consistent growing success in major markets like Australia and Great Britain. On the Block Auctions provides a secure bidding platform allowing prospective home buyers the ability to purchase their dream home without guessing at what price to pay. In addition, sellers can be sure that they are maximizing the sale price of their home by giving all buyers an equal chance to offer their top price. Their primary goal through this unique platform is to provide greater choice for consumers and greater transparency of the process. In my interview with Katie, we discuss the pros and cons of buying and selling a home the traditional way the benefits of buying and selling through the auction process, and how the real estate industry is going to be modernized in the coming years. Without further ado, here's my interview with Katie Steinfeld. Hi, Katie. How are you doing today? I'm good, Sean. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Looking forward to having a very interesting discussion on real estate today. I haven't been the best at releasing podcast episodes lately, but just thought that an interesting episode like yours would be a great way to get everyone's mind off the current COVID situation. So really looking forward to speaking with you today. Yeah, you as well. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Well, let's get started with the first question then. What are the pros and cons of buying and selling a home the traditional way? Traditional way, old school way, the way that (laughs) people have been doing it for many years and decades. Yeah, I think the main pro is the fact that everybody is comfortable with the process. They know what to expect. In our market these days, especially, tend to see a lot of multiple offers or bidding wars, as other people call it. And, you know, there's different ways to approach it, but the strategies are what make consumers mostly comfortable because they know what the process is all about. And you get good results that way, pretty much, especially in the GTA when there's so much demand for housing. Great. And I'm just curious, we're going to get into this a bit more in the following questions, but speaking from personal experience myself, I I know it can be a bit frustrating to be on the losing end of bidding wars, but just wondering what encouraged you and and how you saw the need for a service like yours. Yeah. So basically I've, I've been in the industry for about 10 years. And even when I started, I remember one of my first representation of a buyer included a multiple offer situation and definitely learned a lot. But as I went through through my years, it started to become a much more popular strategy for sellers, which I understood given the demand. But as things started to really ramp up, in our market, I really saw the frustrations that buyers specifically were having with the process. They really felt as though they weren't getting all of the information they needed to make the proper decision in terms of purchasing a home. A lot of times at the end of you know, a, a bidding war situation, and finding out that they didn't get it, obviously there was a lot of disappointment 
And when they found out finally what the home sold for, there was a lot of regret because they, a lot of times they would say, well, I would have gone up to that amount if I knew what it was, but unfortunately I didn't have that information. Other times if they did win the bidding war, then they may feel regret afterwards thinking, oh, well, what was the next best offer? Did I overpay? And so there was regret in that way as well. My partner, Daniel, and I just looked at this issue and thought, well, there's got to be a different way. There's got to be a more transparent option for buyers to be presented with. And on the flip side as well, for sellers, because bidding wars are handled very differently depending on the listing agent, there's always the question of whether or not you actually did maximize the price of the home. Sometimes you do. Other times it's hard to know whether you really pushed everybody to their max level. And because buyers feel uneasy going up to a maximum number where they don't know if they're, you know, they're just basically throwing darts at a number and thinking, oh, well, is this the actual price that I need to pay? There's a lot of questions there as well. As a result, we looked into this a little bit more, obviously had to go through a lot of the regulations that real estate we have to adhere to and making sure that we were following all of those rules. But at the end of the day, after a lot of, <laughs> a lot of different trial and error, we were able to present an option to buyers and sellers that was more transparent and also digital. So you were able to reach a lot more people this way as well. And that's a great segue to my next question. That's not the only way to buy and, and sell a home these days. You could also mm -hmm. do it through an, an online housing auction website like yours. Can you tell the listeners about the growing appeal of online housing auctions and perhaps just tell them about what it is? A lot of people might not be familiar with that. Yeah, it's still a process. It's so funny because auctions have been such a very traditional way of selling in other industries, but in real estate, specifically in the GTA, you don't see it that often. And I think the main reason is because as realtors, we aren't allowed to disclose the contents of an offer. So as a, as a realtor, I can't do it. So how we had to set up the company is we created a separate auction company and uh, have an auctioneer who basically handles the auction component of our sale. So we still list the home on MLS. We do all of the showings and open houses when we're eventually allowed to do them, hopefully, um, once we're through COVID, but um, basically the, the auction company handles the, the sale part. And so what we noticed is that a lot of buyers were more open to this option because they had all of the information they needed in order to make the right decision for, the, for themselves. Our platform obviously is basically like an MLS listing, but it also includes a home inspection if that's available, a status certificate if it's a condo sale, floor plans, things like that. So all of the information they need to make Make the right decision. They can still see the home with their agent and we still cooperate fully with realtors. The only difference is how we arrive at the final price. So basically on a set day, probably about a week out from listing the home, similar to how you would usually see a multiple offer situation work, we would just invite buyers to register on our platform and they have to go through a process to identify them, make sure that they're a serious buyer. And the auction begins at a certain price and it goes up in set increments from there. The auction protects the seller in that we have a set reserve price. So if the home does not reach that price, they are not obligated to sell the home. The sellers feel comfortable knowing that they're going to get the number that they want for the home, if not more. And then buyers can know exactly what they need to offer in order to be the winning buyer at the end of the day. Well, that sounds great. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it kind of sounds like the eBay of real estate. Would that be an appropriate yeah. way to describe it? <laughs> definitely. Yeah. When, when we first came out with it, that's definitely what a lot of people, I think the Sun had actually interviewed us and that's how they compared us. I think the one difference between us and eBay is when the auction is coming to its final minutes, it will extend if somebody comes in with a last minute bid. So it gives everybody a chance to make their final 
final offer, even if it extends past the final deadline. So with eBay, you typically it's like the quickest click at the end will get the thing that they're bidding on. But with, with our auction, the clock will extend. And in some instances, it, it, it has extended half an hour, an hour past the deadline because people will come in and with those last minute bids. Yeah, that makes sense. People are buying and selling real estate, like perhaps the single biggest financial transaction of their lifetime. It's not like they're buying an autographed picture of Wayne Gretzky yeah. or something like that. So it's definitely understandable that people would want to be given sufficient time to make a decision like that. Exactly. Yeah. That sounds great. And following up on that, and you touched on this in your previous answer, but perhaps you could just talk about this in a bit further detail. What are the benefits and limitations of buying and selling a home through the auction process? And in terms of the benefits, you spoke about this previously, but perhaps you could just speak about them as well as the limitations from like a buyer and and seller perspective. Yeah. So definitely transparency is number one when it comes to the the benefits. Um, It also keeps everybody on the same even playing field. So sometimes when you're dealing with offers, you're not only looking at the price, you're also comparing the various conditions, the deposit, all of those other factors that go into an offer. So with an auction, you are making sure everybody is on the same playing field. So deposit is a set amount. Typically, we do not have any conditions. We do have a home inspection available for people to review ahead of time, but the offers will be condition free. So that gives the seller peace of mind knowing that once the auction is complete, there's nothing else that they have to worry about. You know, there's nothing to satisfy in terms of conditions. On the flip side, that may make some buyers uncomfortable. And we definitely understand that perspective. In most of our auctions, we do allow the option for people to come in with what we call like a preemptive offer. If they do want to make an offer the traditional way, then they're able to do that and put in the terms and conditions that they feel comfortable with. I'd say, you know, those are the the main benefits and drawbacks to the auctions process. So just wanted to clarify your answer. So if somebody wanted to include condition of financing in their offer or condition of home inspection, perhaps, are, are they able to use your platform or it would only be for somebody basically making a firm offer? Typically, our auctions do only offer the option of a firm offer. However, we have conducted auctions where we've offered a financing condition, just given the market and how things are going with with banks and lenders. We definitely understand that. So before we even go down the road of posting the auction, we have a discussion with the seller and we give them the pros and cons of, of including conditions because that will bring more buyers to the table, but then as well as the, the drawbacks that will come with conditions that it could potentially fall apart afterward. We, we have those discussions and we basically leave it to the seller to, to make that decision with our experience behind it. And, uh, and so it is an option. I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but I guess it's like selling stuff on eBay. You can choose to cover the shipping yourself or you can make the buyer pay the shipping and you can charge them a ton of money, but you're probably not going to get as many offers. Maybe that's a fair comparison. I don't know what just came to mind. No, that's, no, I think that's a, that's, that's very true. And I, I think for sellers, they like having that choice and that ability to make that decision. Some people understand the perspective of giving a condition and making buyers feel more comfortable and other people just want to say, you know what, whoever the highest bidder is at the end of the day with no conditions is the offer I want to take. And and that's their decision at the end of the day. Great. That sounds wonderful. And just curious, I'm not sure if COVID has affected the online auction process at all, but uh, yeah, maybe you could just tell me how COVID affected your website or or business Mm -hmm. or just talk a bit about it. Because I'm sure most Canadians didn't expect to be where we're at right now. Back in February, I I don't think anyone would have anticipated this. So just curious to hear how coronavirus has made the online auction process easier or any challenges, also Mm -hmm. what's going on in the market as well. Yeah, we've definitely received a lot of phone calls from potential sellers interested in hearing more about the process. For us, we are very particular about the homes that we decide will become an auction. I'd say about 10% of our real estate brokerages business are our auctions at this point. The reason being is, is the first couple of auctions we conducted, basically, we didn't take into account that we need to ensure that there's going to be enough interest and demand and there will be a potential 
potential for multiple offers at the end of the day. The first couple auctions we had, we were obviously very excited and we didn't really take that into account when we were making our, our decisions. That one, the, the first one we did, didn't do as well as we wanted it to because it just didn't have the demand and it was just the type of home that it was. Another factor that has to go into the discussion is if the seller isn't reasonable on their reserve price, then the auction will not do well because you're basically shooting yourself in the foot, the auction isn't going to work miracles. Buyers aren't going to keep bidding and bidding and bidding until the reserve price is hit. They're going to have a limit. It's got to be in line with what the home is valued at. And so that's something that we're very aware of now. So when we do meet with a seller who may have some expectations that are unrealistic, we typically draw them away from the auction um, as an option because we don't want it not to work for them. And we also don't want buyers to be turned off of the process as a result as well. Throughout the last couple of years of putting this auction software and platform together, we've done a lot of educating in the market in terms of other realtors as well as buyers and sellers. And, and every auction that we have, we've had the opportunity to speak with more people. And I do see it becoming more of an option in the West Coast of Canada, in BC, they are seeing more auctions become more the norm as COVID has hit and people are looking for a different option, a more accessible option while you can't leave your house. So I do see it becoming more of an option, but our job at this point is to educate people on the pros and cons and just providing that choice to them. And if they want to go down that road, we can definitely have that discussion and, and make sure it makes sense for their home. Great. Thanks very much for your answer there. And real estate seems like an industry ripe for disruption. How else would you like to see the real estate industry modernized in the coming years? I think that any company that comes into our industry successfully is addressing a consumer need effectively. So we need to look to these trends and companies that are, you know, quote unquote, disrupting our industry and figure out how we can provide better service and results to consumers. One example that comes to mind is House Sigma, and they provide all of the data you don't typically see on our, you know, realtor.ca. And I work with tons of buyers that prefer that platform to realtor.ca because they can get more information. And so that shows us that consumers want that information. We're not there as the gatekeepers to this data. We are providing so much more value in terms of our experience and our marketing and, and all of that other stuff that goes into selling a home. So I think if we are going to view it as a disruption, all of these different companies, we could see it as that, or we can see it as advancing our industry. And I think we need to decide if we'll play a part in that advancement or if we're going to stay back and watch the industry evolve and then be left behind as a result. I really like looking at these different companies and seeing what's coming and really understanding what consumer need they're addressing and how we can come along with them and hopefully stay ahead of them. But just understanding how consumer needs are changing, I think is really important for our industry to take a look at and evolve with that. Well, that's a very interesting answer. And just another thought came to mind, like with the whole COVID situation, I'm sure things will get back to normal eventually. But in terms of disruption, what do you see in terms of buying and selling a home going forward? Do you see it going back to the way it was totally? Or do you see some things changing forever based on the current COVID situation? I think buyers are becoming more comfortable seeing stuff online and making a decision based on that. I've seen a lot of buyers through this COVID situation rely more so on you know, the Matterport tours and all of those different technological advancements that you can just go online and see the home and see take a walk through virtually. And I think people are going to be more comfortable with that process. Even speaking about auctions, I think people are going to become more comfortable pressing a button for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like that's a big decision for somebody to make. And overcoming that fear, I think is going to become more of a reality as we see how this technology really helps to make people's lives easier and advance our industries. Great. Well, Katie, it's been wonderful having you on the show today. Before I let you go, is there anything of interest that you're working on that you'd like to share with our listeners? Daniel, my partner and I have a podcast called Level Up. It's a podcast for realtors and you can find it on all the major platforms. And if you want to head over there, if you're a realtor and want to learn more, we just talk about different ways to essentially level up your business. You can find us over there and learn more about us as well. And where can people find your great online auction website as well? So the 
website for the auctions is otbauctions.com and then our brokerage site is getontheblock.com and we're also on social media at getontheblock. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Burn Your Mortgage podcast. Besides being a podcast host, I'm also an independent mortgage broker. If you or anyone you know, family, friends, co-workers, or neighbors could ever use any unbiased mortgage advice or a second opinion, feel free to reach out. Email me at sean, that's S-E-A-N, at burnyourmortgage.ca or call or text me at 647-867-3711 for a free mortgage consultation. Also, be sure to head on over to www.burnyourmortgage.ca and sign up for my free weekly newsletter. As a small token of my appreciation, you'll be able to download my ultimate mortgage checklist on choosing the perfect mortgage. I look forward to hearing from you and helping you with all your mortgage needs. Once again, thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Burn Your Mortgage Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating. Until next time, happy mortgage burning.